very accurate numerical method for solving first order initial value problems in the form of y prime equals f of x comma y with initial condition y of x sub zero equals y sub zero is the fourth order Runge-Kutta method, often referred to as the RK4 method. It provides the approximate value of y at a given point and is derived using the Taylor series expansion of y of x sub n plus one, which equals y of x sub n plus h, which is shown below, where c is a number between x sub n and x sub n plus h. The fourth order Runge-Kutta method uses a Taylor polynomial of degree four, and the result is shown below where y sub n plus one equals y sub n plus one sixth times the sum of k sub one to k sub two to k sub three and k sub four, where k sub one through k sub four are shown below. Analyzing the formulas for k sub one through k sub four, notice k sub two depends on k sub one, k sub three depends on k sub two, and k sub four depends on k sub three. Also, k sub two and k sub three involve approximations to the slope at the midpoint between x sub n and x sub n plus one, which is why we see the one halves in the formulas. So let's take a look at an example. We're asked to use the fourth order runge kutta method to solve y prime equals y minus x with initial condition y of zero equals two on the closed interval from zero to 0 0.5 with h equals 0 0.1. And we're told to round all values to three decimal places. To begin, because y prime equals y minus x, we have f of x comma y equals y minus x. And because we have the interval from zero to 0 0.5, and we're making approximations in increments of 0 0.1 given by h, we need to compute the formulas for n equals zero, one, two, three, and four. To begin, because the initial condition is y of zero equals two, we know when n equals zero, x sub zero equals zero, and y sub zero equals two. Before we start our calculations, let's record the information in a table. Where, we ha where the first column is x sub n, the second column is y sub n, the third column is the true solution, which is y of x equals e to the x plus x plus one. We'll use this third column to see how accurate our approximations are. But in reality, if we could find the true solution, we wouldn't use an approximation method. But again, because we know x sub zero equals zero and y sub zero equals two, the first row is zero, two, two. Notice for the true solution, y of zero, is also two. Our first approximation will be y sub one. Notice when determining y sub one, n is equal to zero. Before we can determine y sub one, we need to calculate k sub one through k sub four. Where k sub one is equal to h times f of x sub zero comma y sub zero, where h is 0 0.1, x sub zero is zero, y sub zero is two, and f of zero comma two is just two minus zero, Simplifying, we have k sub one equals 0 0.2. For k sub two, we have k sub two equals h times f of x sub zero plus one half h comma y sub zero plus one half k sub one, where h is 0 0.1, x sub zero is zero, y sub zero is two, and k sub one is 0 0.2. Simplifying, we have 0 0.1 times f of 0 0.05 comma 2.1, giving us 0 0.1 times the difference of 2.1 and 0 0.05, which equals 0 0.205. Moving to k sub three, k sub three equals h times f of x sub zero plus one half h comma y sub zero plus one half k sub two, where h is 0 0.1, x sub zero is zero, y sub zero is two, and k sub two is 0 0.205. Simplifying, we have 0 0.1 times f of 0 0.05 comma 2.103, which equals 0 0.1 times the difference of 2.103 and 0 0.05, which is 0 0.205. And finally, we determine k sub four, where k sub four is equal to h times f of x sub zero plus h comma y sub zero plus k sub three, where h is 0 0.1, x sub zero is zero, y sub zero is two, and k sub three is 0 0.205. Simplifying, we have 0 0.1 times f of 0 0.1 comma 2.205, which equals 0 0.1 times the difference of 2.205 and 0 0.1, giving us 0 0.211. Now that we have k sub one through k sub four, we can determine y sub one. y sub one equals y sub zero plus one sixth 
times the sum of k sub 1 to k sub 2 to k sub 3 and k sub 4 shown below, giving us y sub 1 equals 2.205. Let's record this in the table. Comparing to the true solution, we have a very good approximation. And now we want to determine y sub 2. In order to determine y sub 2, we use n equals 1. We also have to use our previous calculation that x sub 1 equals 0 0.1 and y sub 1 equals 2.205. Once again, we begin by determining k sub 1 through k sub 4. This time we'll go a little bit faster. Notice all the formulas for k sub 1 through k sub 4 involve x sub 1 and y sub 1 because we're determining y sub 2 and n is equal to 1. So you may want to pause the video and verify these calculations, but we have k sub 1 equals 0 0.211, k sub 2 equals 0 0.216, k sub 3 equals 0 0.216, and k sub 4 equals 0 0.222. And now we can determine y sub 2. y sub 2 is equal to y sub 1 plus 1 sixth times the sum of k sub 1 to k sub 2 to k sub 3 and k sub 4, which is shown below, the final result is y sub 2 equals 2.421. Let's go ahead and record this in the table and compare it to the true value. Next, we want to determine y sub 3. To determine y sub 3, notice n is equal to 2, which means we'll have to use x sub 2 and y sub 2 to determine y sub 3. So here at the top, we have x sub 2 and y sub 2. And once again, we determine k sub 1 through k sub 4. Notice all the formulas involve x sub 2 and y sub 2. We have k sub 1 equals 0 0.222, k sub 2 equals 0 0.228, k sub 3 equals 0 0.229, and k sub 4 equals 0 0.235. Now we determine y sub 3, where y sub 3 equals y sub 2 plus 1 sixth times the sum of k sub 1 to k sub 2 to k sub 3 and k sub 4, shown below, resulting in y sub 3 equals 2.650. Let's go ahead and record this. We have two more rows to complete in the table. To complete the table, we still need to determine y sub 4 and y sub 5. I'm not going to go through all the calculations for those two y values, but I do want to show the formulas. To determine y sub 4, notice we need to use x sub 3 and y sub 3 because n equals 3. Final result should be y sub 4 equals 2.892. And to determine y sub 5, we need to use x sub 4 equals 0 0.4 and y sub 4 equals 2.892. And the final result should be y sub 5 equals 3.149. Let's go ahead and record these values in the table. Now that we have the table completed, we can see that our approximations using the fourth order Runge Cutter method are very close to the true y values. I hope you found this helpful.